When your father got married, where did they settle? Okay. My dad had a brother-in-law that owned a grist mill in Meriwether County. And a grist mill, as you know, ground, ground corn and wheat. His brother-in-law had lived in Atlanta. He went down and bought this mill in Meriwether County. The dam gave way right after he moved there, and he had to build a new dam. That dam cost him $10,000. Now, if you could go see that dam now, you wouldn't believe it. That dam now would cost you half a million dollars. But he built it for $10,000. He had to build a house. There was no house on the property, so he built a house and had to do a lot of repairs because the place had got badly run down. And my dad had worked for him before he went in the Army. In fact, my daddy was the timekeeper when they built the dam. And by the way, a black man now was a supervisor for building that dam. And a lot of his workers were black people. And they, they built that dam, and my dad was the timekeeper. Then he had to go in the Army. And then he got the Spanish flu. Uh, while he was in the Army. And you know, literally thousands of people died with that. The Spanish flu killed about as many soldiers as the did was killed in action. So uh, after he got back from the Army and got kind of got his health back, he went back to that mill and worked for his brother-in-law, grinding corn and wheat. And then a little bit later on, they, they started a meal route. And they would, uh, they bought them a truck in 1922, T-model Ford truck. And uh, they would haul meal and sell it in Greenville, Warm Springs, Manchester, uh, LaGrange, uh, Hogansville, and all those surrounding towns, even as far down as West Point below LaGrange. So had a pretty good mail, a meal route. And they did quite well with it. And then the, his, his brother-in-law died in 1928. And uh, they were living in Atlanta. And then his sister and her son moved back down to the mill uh, into the big house. And we lived out in the tenant house. And then when the Depression hit in 1929, we had just bought a new 1929 model Chevrolet truck. And I have the canceled check here for that truck, something like $650. Uh, things were just going to the bad. The price of corn was dropping fast. And so my dad saw that there was not enough business to support two families. So he sold my aunt and his nephew his part of it. And we moved to Carroll County here and went to farming. He, he, uh, and by the way, the government paid the World War Ones a, a bonus about 1930, and Daddy got all two or three hundred dollars out of that, which was a lot of money in 1930. And he bought a pair of mules and some plows, and uh, we started farming up in the Hickory Level community. We farmed there one year, moved to Lowell Community, and farmed over there five years. Then we bought this farm on the installment plan, and uh, that's how we wound up with this farm. Do you know what factors affected him moving to this particular area? Because the dad lived most of his life in Carroll County, and it was a good farming county. See, it was a much better farming land than it was in Merriweather County, where we lived. And uh, Carroll County was one of the best cotton counties in the state of Georgia. It was high in production of cotton, and Daddy knew how to raise cotton. So that's the reason why he came up. Better land, right. And so was this the first uh, land that he actually owned? Yeah. This farm here was the first farm that my daddy ever owned, and we paid $1,800 for it for 97 acres of land. Can you imagine that? Now, $1,800 wouldn't even buy a half acre of this land now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned that he bought it using the installment plan. Would you describe that? Well, you see, back in those days, the government paid the farmers 
so much to plant cover crops to help build up the land and they'd give them a, a check in the fall of the year for that. And in 1936, we made a good cotton crop, something like 16 bales, which that, that was counted a good crop for a two-horse farmer. And so he used that money that he got for uh, plant and cover crops from the government, plus some money he got out of the cot and made a down payment to my great uncle who owned this place. And we made him a down payment on the farm. And uh, we moved here. And uh, we, and let's see, by 1943, we had him paid off because I went to work in the Martin Aircraft plant in Baltimore, Maryland, making pretty good money. And my dad uh, wrote me a letter and says, well, I like only, I believe it was $300 having the place paid off. Well, I just wrote him a letter back. I was made of sending money home for him to put in the bank. I said, well, you just take the money out of the bank and pay it off. So that's what he did, paid it off. So six and seven, in, in seven years, we had to pay paid off. And originally, I think it was set up to pay off in about 10 years. Of course, my dad, what he did, he went to the Federal Land Bank and borrowed the money to pay my uncle off after, after we had been here about two or three years. He just borrowed the money from the Federal Land Bank, paid my uncle off, and then he, in return, paid the Federal Land Bank uh, so much uh, each year. And you said cover crops? Cover crops. That was land building crops like Austrian winter peas, field peas. Uh, those were known as cover crops. Uh, you planted that uh, in the late fall and then in the spring, see that stuff would grow up uh, half knee high. And you take a turning plow and plow that under and that built the land up. See, the roots to those cover crops had the nitrogen nodules on them and uh, that helped build up the land. And so that's why they called them cover crops. Yeah. Well, if you had to give a description of this area as far as, if you had to describe the land, how would you describe it? Rough. It was very rocky. This land, this in this particular area, it was very rocky land. But it was, um, it was rich land. You had to put up with the rocks to get the rich land, and you had to keep it well terraced. If you didn't terrace it, it would wash away. And some farmers were negligent about keeping their terraces up, and they let the land wash away. But my father always kept his land well terraced so it wouldn't wash away. In a little bit, I'll take you out here and show you. We can stand right here and see the terraces all the way to the bottom of that hill there. Mm -hmm. And that's what that was for, to keep them. And we had that in cover crops. Another one of the cover crops was called Cerisa Lespedeza. We had that in Cerisa Lespedeza down that hill. You could turn the Chattahoochee River loose on it and it wouldn't wash because it had deep roots to it. Mm -hmm. You're learning things you didn't heard about, aren't you? <laughs> okay.